what was Mac in the day like creating it during the quarantine um, and the effect it had on it, man. Um, what's crazy is so this actual song, Kimi Casanova, um, I guess I think I wrote it about April. Uh, I started like, writing it like late March, early April, maybe. And uh, I just kind of started writing on it. And it was never um, one of those things where I was just like, I really want to write this, and really want to get it out. I took so long to kind of write it because I was just like, whenever I get done with it, I'll get done with it. It was just like an experimental project, you know. And when I finished writing it, um, had the video done about May. And it sat in my phone uh, for a while. And I looked at it um, a couple of times and then my photographer decided like, we're just gonna go back and reshoot it because we don't like the footage we have. Um, went back and redid it um, in September, redid the video in September and um, re-recorded the song and the audio got a different beat to put to it and um, posted it like September the 30th, you know. Um, I had at that point I had already reconstructed my page. If you go on, you see like color schemes on my page. You see the yellow strip, the blue, the green, the red. You know what I'm saying. So Kimi Casanova was a brown color strip that was supposed to, you know what I'm saying, um, synchronize with those. Um, man, I did the song, and I'm just being honest. I didn't think it was gonna do what it did. Um, I guess people kind of looked at the. Uh, aesthetics of it and like the theatrics and everything with me um you know being in this day and age and kind of like taking it back to the 70s i guess it kind of um um touched a sensitive spot with their nostalgia and everything like that and just kind of got people like really in tune with it um and from there i was telling i i remember telling myself writing the uh kimi casanova freestyle i said damn i don't know if i could talk like this forever like this shit is kind of hard coming up with it. And it's not that it was hard. It's just that because I'm not a pimp in real life, I was like, what the hell does a pimp even say? But I had to tell myself, stop thinking about what a pimp would say and just be the pimp. Like you are the pimp. Like what would you say if you were a pimp? You know what I'm saying? So I had to approach it from that versus trying to see what would somebody else say or, you know what I'm saying? Put it in my brain to try to pick someone else's brain. Just be yourself. And whatever you would say, just say that. And people will kind of go for it if you just make it look believable. And man, once I got the reaction from um, the people about it, I'm like, damn, y'all really like this. And oh uh, man, I had people sending me beats and stuff like that. I think I wrote back in the day and like, it wasn't even a week. I just literally wrote the whole project out. I got like four or five other beats. One of the songs that's on there actually was already written. I had it. Um, I just put it to a different beat and kind of, switch the uh, chorus, but um, yeah, and I was just like, damn, this works perfect, it meshes. I wrote the songs really, really fast because I guess the energy that I was receiving from the people kind of gave me the inspiration I needed to hurry up and just jot all of it down and it was just like flowing really, really easy. And every time I finished with one song, I was like, all right, let me see if I can do another one. And I start on it and it just comes really easy. And I was like, damn, it's not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. And even then after that, I just kept writing more content, you know what I'm saying, along those lines. And I'm just like, damn, okay, it gets a little easier every day. It's just about if I have the right beat or if I'm in the groove and the mood to wanna create in that lane, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, it, it, it definitely was, um, I don't know, the quarantine, I'm gonna say it didn't, it, it affected me positively um, with that. You know, I had the time to sit down and write it and, you know, get those things done and everything like that. Um, definitely uh, been sitting on the songs since about October. Uh, it's been done and finished and we didn't have to uh, go back and reconstruct some things with like the, the beats and instrumentals. We wanted to add some stuff and be, get like really, really in that pocket and uh, kind of experimental, especially me just doing like, wanting to do like traditional hip hop and stuff like that. So I had to kind of really, really tap into that lane and like make people want to believe it, you know what I'm saying? And just having a, the time and the, and the space and the opportunity to do it every day, you know what I'm saying? Um, and just kind of being able to lock in with myself and stay in my head, you know, I can't go outside and do a lot of things. So that, that just kind of like drove a different level of inspiration, like, you know, and it was just, just thinking about it like, I'm gonna write this shit so good that when the world opens back up, they're gonna wish like they never shut none of this shit down. Like, you know? So yeah, man, it, it was definitely uh, fun writing a lot of it uh, once I realized that I could do it, you know what I'm saying, with ease, so. The hardest thing I think that I tapped into um, with this 
whole thing being experimental is um I guess going into the uh, the aura of how it looks. If you're looking at the Kimi Casanova video, um, and even like the um, the vibe of the song, and just trying not to get too far away from like actually rapping. I didn't want it to seem like it was forced or like I was just desperate or trying like something way far left. Uh, a lot of people listen to the song and it's the first thing they say is like, damn, this is going to be a joke. And this is something funny. Like this is like some type of parody or something. Um, but when they listen to it at the base, you know what I'm saying? And at the foundation, it doesn't lack like good uh, bars. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to keep rapping and uh, just good bars at the base and foundation of all of that. So it's going to, it's going to be funny until you start listening and it's like, damn, okay, that was hard. It's funny, but that was hard. Okay, I don't think he's going to be able to do it again. And then you hear another line, you're like, damn, now nah, I'm believing that he's a pimp because I don't think, I didn't think he was going to say that. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking it's going to be something else, you know? So I just kind of wanted to um, lure people in, I guess with a funny visual and something else nostalgic. Um, but at the same time, if you're listening to it, you're just like, damn, I cannot deny the fact that it's like, it's really good. You know what I'm saying? And he really uh, is selling it uh, with the bars and just the things that he's saying. And that's kind of been a lot of people's reaction and everything like that. The hardest part for me was just not trying to make it look forced. And I kind of debated with myself about, and I still do like, how do I keep this going without people thinking like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying too hard to be you know what I'm saying? What they see on the screen. Um, I just have to make it all come together and seem natural. And like, it's not a, um, I don't know, like I'm putting on a show or anything. It's just, it is me, but it's like, you know, I just had to be careful how I deliver it. So if I could remix Kimi Casanova, man, actually that Wale is the really good. Uh, Wale doesn't get a lot of the credit he deserves and he can wiggle into a lot of lanes. Uh, his wordplay is just phenomenal. Um, Wale would have actually been good, and I never thought about that until today, actually. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, man, like two people that I could definitely hear on the Kimi Casanova remix. Uh, one Snoop Dogg because it's just him and like his status. Like, you know, he fits the pimp aura already. You know what I'm saying? We've seen him in that light a thousand times, and it's just like, you know, he's an OG, and it's just like, I don't know. Um, it's just like he's the perfect fit for that, you know. Another person. Uh, that people have kind of been putting in my ear and I'm like, uh, I think it would be really nice. Um, Smino, if you've ever heard of Smino, yeah. So Smino is really nice in his wordplay um, and stuff like that. Um, other than that, man, I haven't thought about too many other people. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to doing it with people like Sugar Free or people who have just like that pimp or came out with that type of rap and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I have to look into that guy you're talking about, Chip. <laughs>